And we're back. I'm Alec Dinkoff, voice talent with creator and founder of Open Source Workplace, Steve Todd. How are you doing today, Steve? I'm doing well, Alec. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not in the same situation you are. We are currently in Kiev. So I think we may have some interesting aspects of the, of the camera and so on and so forth. But anyway, we, we, we just got to go through with this. And uh, But I appreciate you uh, being so good spirited and joining while you're gallivanting around Europe um, and, and doing this. And obviously, say hello to everybody who uh, who's joined us today. I uh, appreciate you and I uh, hope uh, we can give you some entertainment and uh, some information. That's what we're here for. So, Steve, for those of us who don't know who I am or who you are, first, let's let them have a chance to subscribe and hit that notification bell, right? But other, after that, why don't you uh, tell us something about yourself so people can really get to know you? All right, all right. So uh, one thing, uh, something that I do each day, um, is I take a cold shower. That's how I start each morning. Once I start, the start's not the right word because usually it's uh, three or four hours after I've been up before I basically get up working on uh, open source workplace and then when I get ready for my office, I have a cold shower. And this started for a couple of reasons. Um, one, uh, for health reasons, just to stimulate the body and put the body into some sort of unnatural um I don't know, fight or flight or call it what you want, sort of uh, just to wake the body up. But then the other side of it is um, whenever you do that once, your body then knows that whenever you're about to turn that hot water tap off, there's a fear. And I persisted in keeping that uh, thing going forward so that anything that scared me going forward probably uh, wasn't going to scare me quite as often and as much as turn off that hot water and that cold water coming out. Because I tell you, once you do that, your whole body chemistry and everything changes. But it's taught me a lot, right? So uh, whenever I was uh, embarking on doing open source workplace, I'd never posted anything on social media, never. I had to get over a fear of what would that be like? And I sort of take that back to turn off that hot water tap and being exposed to that cold water every morning. And for me, that's the mindset. And it's a reminder to me that no matter what I face during the day, at this moment in time, you're making a conscious decision to turn off that hot water and expose yourself to that freezing cold water. And as you know, as you know from your time in Indiana, um, basically when it gets to winter, those winter months are cold. And to be able to do that, um, yeah, but the lesson to me is uh, no matter what comes up today, you doing this, you're going to be able to do anything, Steve. So that's that's sort of the genesis behind. But that's what I do each morning. Well, I will say that the winters have been cold. I've seen some uh, fr freezing to death winters. And when I tell people how cold it gets, they say, wow, you must be hardy people, you know, to suffer through that. And to have that strength to go, to go cold from hot to comfortable to freezing cold, um, that's full shock in your system. So I can see why there's no fear in other things. Um, that's absolutely great. Now, for those of us like me who can't do that every morning, <laughs> do you have any other productivity tips that you want to throw out? Sure, absolutely. Um, so again, this is coming from an article that we have up there, uh, 100 uh, Ways to be Productive in the Workplace. Uh, it's one of the top trending articles on the site. So uh, this one is don't multitask. And I am, and I think most males are, uh, awful, terrible at multitasking, but we believe we are really good at it. Um, I know I'm not, and I have to do everything I can to ensure I'm multitask. I don't, I don't multitask. So I will turn off all notifications on um, my email. I will turn off notifications on my instant messaging. I have no notifications coming up on my phone, except the ones that I want to see. Um, so I try to manage how do I, when I have to get in and do that focus work, um, how do I stop myself from getting into multitask? And, then, and as you know, you're a creative person. Whenever you're doing one thing, all of a sudden you're trying to think, oh, I could do this over here and the brain goes, right? The creativity just takes off. So how do you manage that, right? And it's one of the hardest things to do. So I try to focus on one thing 
Um, and I encourage everybody to focus on one thing and find out what are those triggers that pull you away so you can try to reduce or eliminate those triggers so you can be focused on one single thing. Psychologists show that whenever we try to multitask, our productivity diminishes dramatically and actually creating and focusing on one thing um, is how we can be reductive. That's great. It, focusing on yourself, right, and make, making yourself more productive is absolutely what we're here for. And you know, you know what other category of people focuses on people? HR, HR in every office. That's right. Open Source Workplace has a great review of HR on Purpose by Steve Brown. It's out now. It's in audio. It's in written. Um, you can see all of that on Open Source Workplace for our podcast. Check it out. Links below. Uh, he says people outside of HR often say HR specialists are apologetic for being in the field. Like, like I'm sorry I do this job. Uh, is that even true? Um, I'm not sure people in the field say it. I think the perception for those outside it looking at HR people may feel that. Um, and I think that's where he's sort of coming from. Um, and Stephen Brown has been in this field for a long time, so I'm not going to contradict him. It's obviously his experience. It's who he interacts with and sort of the business. In, and he's obviously a, a professional who um, a lot of people follow and obviously an, an author on, on the subject. And um, what I can say is, is there a perception that they're apologetic? I think um, HR people find it really hard to win with their colleagues because they're in that place where they're almost between a, a rock and a hard place, right? Where they've got to ensure there's the right culture within the organization, there's the right benefits within the organization, things are structured right, the workforce planning's in place. And sometimes it contradicts other objectives in the organization. And I think people often see them as a stumbling block um, where perhaps that's not the case and not a true reflection. So I can certainly see how people could perceive that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's a really tough thing, but I'm not gonna contradict uh, Stephen Broad when it comes to his perception and what he's actually talking about. Okay, I, I certainly have seen sometimes HR professionals are very caring. They, they deal with people, they care. So sometimes the caring person is more empathetic. They uh, maybe apologize more for certain things, but then people see it as an offshoot of, oh, they're sorry for what they have to do. Well, no, they're also protecting us in a lot of aspects. It's, it's a great perspective, Alec. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's a great perspective. Thank you. Um, when someone in HR thinks company culture, is there just one culture that the company has? It's, it, I think it's a, it's a real teasing question. And I think it's something that a lot of organizations think about, especially senior leadership. Um, I almost think there's probably two or three cultures within an organization. I think there's the culture that uh, an organization wants to portray to the external customer base. Um, and that's what's created obviously through marketing, through branding and, uh, you know, outreach. I think there is then the internal uh, culture that an organization senior leadership want to portray to the organization this is who we are as an organization and that's the message that goes down um, and then I think there's the real culture that is different between each office each business each department even where it's this is how we do things around here right and, and that's the culture where it comes from the ground up and it's an organic culture. It's not one that's sort of uh, promoted. It's not something that is pushed down to anybody. It's the nature of the individuals that actually connect and collaborate and actually are socialized together. So I think there are multiple layers of it. I think that it's, it does vary between country, location, and department. I think sort of, I sort of, you know, think of the, the departments that I've worked in and my time in working. And I think the culture of, the departments I've been in are certainly different to what I perceive or what I can see other groups. I'm not saying one's better, one's worse. It's just a different type of culture. Um, and again, I think that's something that comes organically because of the individuals and the personalities are within there. Of course, of course. Okay, well said. Um, he does mention that HR professionals feel secluded even with company culture intact. 
why is this and what can be done about it? I think it almost goes back to the first question, right? Um, where perception is their apologetic. And I think with that then becomes a barrier where it is that little more challenging, I think, when I could see why that's why HR people would feel a little bit like that. Also, you know, part of their responsibilities in, within some organizations, not every, because every organization is different, is to promote a corporate culture. Uh, and sometimes whenever you're pushing things and you're driving things and you are trying to create change, um, and if you're going against friction where it maybe is a little different to a team dynamic or a team culture, there can be barriers there. So therefore, you, you know, maybe the perception and the feeling is, they do feel that seclusion. They do feel that there is there is a, a barrier there. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's it's a, it's an interesting question. And the more I sort of think about it, the sort of the more uh, my mind sort of unfolds to sort of see why um, that 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 could be that way. Of course, and if you're an HR professional, um, feel free. I mean, you can reach out to other HR professionals in the field, ask questions, and see how they've coped with these things. But speaking but, of barriers, so before before you go, no, you're absolutely just to finish to your point on there, Alec, and I didn't mean to cut you off because I know you're about to to finish this off there. But I just thought about it. If, if you're an HR professional, and, and you know what we're saying you know rings with you or you have a, a different viewpoint let's share it here let's sort of promote a car and start a conversation you know what are the concerns what are those barriers how do you feel um let's let's note those and let's sort of start a com conversation on, on the subject because i think it's interesting to see perspectives um and uh yeah let's start a conversation the more people share the more that can be done to help right for for the answer to be there, the question has to be asked. So speaking of barriers, like we talked about, there should be no barriers between you and liking, sharing, and subscribing to this channel. Put this on all your social platforms. We don't care. We're happy to speak to everyone. We'll be here next week, every week, right here. Join us then. Bye now.